Welcome guys. The FedEx man just dropped off these five boxes for my Malone kayak trailer. So I'm going to lay them out and get started and take you through a build. I bought them for my kayaks over here. The one on top is my wife's, the Revolution 13, and I have my 12 foot, one inch Hobie out back on the bottom. We love them. We've had them out three times already. Just big fun. By the way, I built these standalone kayak racks. I built them out of wood I had in the garage, about $40 worth of wood. I ordered two sets of the Suspens Easy kayak racks, bolted them on there with lag bolts and kind of sliced up a little swimming noodle, kid swimming noodle from Walmart just, just to protect the kayaks themselves. If you want a SketchUp file, just leave your email in the comment section and I'll send it to you. But as soon as I get these boxes laid out, we'll get started. Just a quick note, guys. I weighed each of the individual pa packages. Two of them weighed 62 pounds and there are the weight of the other three for a total of 241 pounds. So subtract the packaging material and you probably got a trailer weight of 230 pounds, which means that my avalanche is not going to even feel that at all behind the trailer. So I'll have to keep an eye to make sure the trailer is actually back there. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, guys, here's everything laid out in no particular order. They give you a full size spare, which I think is nice. Here's the two tires, fenders, all the electrical for the lighting, leaf springs, assorted brackets. These bars here in the plastic are used to mount the little spoons that hold the kayak. Here's the axle, various parts. There's the hitch, handle, bags. Everything arrived really good. This particular bag right here arrived open, as you can see, and there were about five or six bolts and washers rolling around in the bottom of the box, so hopefully nothing got lost, but I'm sure Malone will make good if it does. That's the bumper, cross members. The tongue is about, looks like about maybe eight feet long, which is what you need when you're carrying kayaks that are as long as these are, and some are even longer. Here's the actual spoons or rests that the kayaks are going to sit on. Four for each kayak. They give you the straps, which is really a nice touch. Mounting hardware. These are the covers that go over the hubs of the tires. So everything's here, and uh, looks like it's going to be fun. Oh, this piece of paper right here is a thank you note from Malone and saying that their company is going to ship the papers, required papers, for you to fill out your paperwork to get your VIN number. When I purchased this on the internet, I paid no tax, but of course, Washington State, once you register your trailer, they want you to pay 8.34% on the cost of the trailer. So, thought I was going to get away, but I didn't. So, I am going to go ahead and get started. I'm not going to bore you with a blow-by-blow, minute-by-minute video, but I will work for an hour, see how far I am, and then come back and film for a few seconds and keep going till it's all done. Okay, fellas, I've been working for about an hour. I started at 4 and it's now 5.10 and that included interruptions, texting the wife, picking up firewood or helping stack firewood and talking to the grandkids. So, so far coming along pretty good. I was a little bit confused right here because when it said to attach these brackets, it did not say use washers and I thought perhaps there should be washers but because it didn't say use washers I didn't 
And that turned out to be the right choice because whenever they want you to use washers, they tell you use washers. So for instance, on this bolt here, you have a washer on this side and there's a washer underneath here um, where the head of the bolt is. And on this side here, there's two washers and then two washers again over here. Here's the electrical coming through the tongue. I just simply tied a heavy socket on to the end of this and uh, let gravity feed this all the way through the tongue as per their instructions. That's the part up there that's going to hook to the trailer. A word of caution, guys. When they say hand tighten only, they don't mean hand tighten with tools. I thought it might have meant hand tighten and not using power tools, but they mean hand tighten without wrenches or sockets. In other words, just your fingers only because these parts have to stay loose right here. These bolts here and these bolts under here, they have to stay loose so that you can fit the brackets in here. Um, on the instructions, they say, make sure the two holes in the center are face down. But as you can see, both brackets have six holes all together, three on either side. And the only difference between the two is that the one says Malone on the back and this one doesn't. So seeing as they're symmetrical, I don't think it matters which side goes up or down. Okay, so there's where I am so far. I'm gonna keep on going and I'll report in a little while. The frame is together. And just to reiterate guys, they only want you to slap it together loosely, finger tight only, except for these brackets here. Those are the only ones you can crank down with your tools. After you get everything together, you fasten the bolts on these members first, on the outside, those two bolts first, then the other two, then the other two over there, and then the other cross member bolts, those are carriage bolts. Bolting those eight bolts first, then you tighten these four bolts next, that one, and those two under there, and then lastly, these two, and it comes out nice and straight and flat. Because when I had it too tight, I had some issue with this mating right here, and this one here was about a quarter inch up this way past this, and, I, and the frame wasn't straight. But after I tightened it in the sequence, they suggested that worked out fine. Uh, I guess you can do yourself a favor and read through the instructions first before doing it. I did not do that, but uh, so I hopefully I will save you some time. So that's together. I'm pushing on. Okay, starting to put the axle together. There's a hole in the bottom of the axle and that hole goes onto this pin on the leaf spring. And again, make sure you put them on facing the same way. So if I have this one here, I wanna make sure that I turn this around so that it's the same way. These, again, tighten just enough to hold the U-bolts on because they have to fit onto the frame and you don't need them too tight. Axle is mounted. And it says at this point, to slip the three and a half inch bolts through here and don't tighten too much because this is a hinge and it has to be able to move. The spring needs to be able to move up and down in here. So getting ready to put that in. Gonna put the tires on and then flip her over. The hubcaps slip on these things here, slip on through the back of the wheel on and then you bolt the wheel on finger tight flip the trailer then tighten them down to specs with a wrench fellas it's starting to look like a trailer i'm going to torque down the lug nuts i was a little bit apprehensive because when i started threading the lug nuts on they went on about 80 percent 85 percent and then got kind of stuck and I thought they might not be deep enough or somehow cross-threaded. So I dropped a couple of drops of machine oil on the, on the bolts. And when I applied the tools to it, they went right on. 
Uh, be careful when you're lifting the trailer over. Don't forget we're dealing with 230 pounds, so lift from the corner. It's, the instructions say lift from the corner here and flip it over and gonna be good. Lamps went on with no problem. On the left side, the license plate bracket goes between the lamp and the bracket. There's the bracket right there, that L. And here's the license plate bracket hanging down. Don't forget, left lamp gets the yellow wire and the right lamp gets the green wire. Okay, guys, I'm going to pack it in for tonight. It's 7.05, so exactly three hours since I've been working on it. Um, I think I could have gone a little faster if I had read the instructions first. I didn't have to go back and undo some bolts, but I'm really happy with the way it's going together. I have the amber running lights on, and the tail lights are all attached. I'm going to Wait till tomorrow till I'm fresh to do the wiring. So, so far, so good. Looks good. And we'll finish it up tomorrow, okay? It's so small, I think it's going to fit in the garage right in between the car and the kayak. So, that's going to be awesome. I don't have to store it outside. See you tomorrow, guys. Good morning, YouTube. I'm back. Another gorgeous day here in the Pacific Northwest. Neighbors getting ready to work on their house over there. That's what that big cat is. Anyway, been on the trailer for about 31 minutes today so far. And have the wiring in. It went in very easily. I ran the wiring in through the frame right here. You can see it. And gave myself a nice little loop and connected them together. They provide these clips. They don't provide these. So I had some of those in my shop and I made sure I had a little excess there. Ran it along here. Right here, you have to separate the two wires and then hook the black wire from the running light right there into the trailer brown wire. While I was doing that, I nicked the yellow wire just a little bit so that's what you see that uh black tape on there to protect the wiring um this side went very well over here and so they provide all these clips i started from the tail lights back because i've heard people complaining about malone doesn't provide enough wiring so i started from the back of the lights ran it up clipped it all the way up the tongue, and then up here, I bundled up about um, 12 to 10 inches of wire and just kind of put it together like that so it doesn't slip back down the tongue. And so now I have about three feet of wiring. So that should be plenty to complete the hookup to the hitch. Okay guys, I am wondering why Malone suddenly decided to switch from carriage bolts to these slotted bolts to put on the fender. I don't get it. Go away, B. Um, they are a hassle to put on, or I shouldn't say a hassle, way more difficult than they needed to be. been. They should have just put square holes here and put carriage bolts and been done with it. So now you have to turn the bolt with a wrench and hold it with a big screwdriver and these bolts have the lock nut plastic in there so it's a lot more difficult than it should have been but oh well it's on i'm gonna do the other one i guess i'll stop crying being a big baby it only took five minutes um the fenders are symmetrical front to back and side to side so it doesn't matter how you attach the brackets of course just making sure that the sides that attach to the trailer are on the same edge of the fender and you should be okay so not as bad as i thought here i go total time to put on the fenders and brackets 15 minutes 
I think it would have been way easier to put the fenders on without the tires in the way. I'm not sure how you would have done that. Maybe support the axle with a couple of jack stands and put the tire, put the fenders on first, then the tires. I don't know. I just did it the way they said. A little bit fussy. Watch this clearance right here. It's very close to the light. It was touching it right there. So I don't, they don't have much clearance right there. And then back here, the fender hits this bolt head right here. So watch out for that. As usual, don't crank down too hard. See, I had the same problem over here. That's fenders contacting this bolt head. And again, really tight clearance between the light and the fender. But it's on, looks great. About 12 minutes to assemble the tongue assembly. Once again, I didn't read the instructions all the way through and I had to go back and remove a bolt because once you crimp, crimp the wire on here, right here, you have to put that underneath the bolt so it makes contact with the trailer. So I guess I'll learn one of these days. Um, as you can see, the wrench is still in there because they recommend turning the bolt head down here from underneath. I'll see if I can get a picture of it. And hopefully you can see that right there. And then spin that bolt head instead of turning that uh, a nut up here because they want this wire to stay straight. But anyway, it's in. Total time about 15 minutes, not too difficult at all. As per their instructions, guys, they recommended putting this knot in the wires here so when you're threading it through the tongue going back that way, you don't pull it too far. However, I did not take the knot out and I don't like this tangled mess up here. So that means I'm gonna have to take off the hitch and loosen the bolt that holds on the support under there in order to disconnect that white wire temporarily so I can untangle this mess. So that's gonna be about a 10 to 15 minute setback, but let me do that and then we'll get back and start on the rest of the trailer. 13 minutes to install the rear support bracket with the U-bolt and nuts. They don't say exactly where to install it other than center it on the back of the trailer. So that's what I did. Again, don't tighten too much. You don't want to crush anything. I took a half hour detour in the wood shop to prepare these two sticks. On the internet, people have complained about these bars here that they give you bending under the weight of very, very heavy kayaks. Some people have remedied that by inserting rebar. But what I did, and I hope I can get this in here so you can see it, is prepared these two sticks in my wood shop to just fit in there. And I'm gonna slide those in like that. I figure, unlike rebar, it won't rust. They are about a quarter inch shorter. And if those bars do start to sag a little bit, maybe this wood will give it a little bit more support. So I'm going to slide those in, hammer those in, and put the rubber caps back on. This step is not recommended by Malone. This is just something I'm doing to help strengthen the integrity of the support bars. Wood stick is in, perfect fit, as you can see. Gonna put the rubber cap back on and be done. 13 minutes and 46 seconds later, the support bars are installed. And guys, you are looking at the complete basic trailer package. The support rods extend seven and three quarter inches on all four points. So they are centered. Everything's nice and sturdy. I'm glad I have the wood inside of the support rods, although they seem pretty sturdy to me. Just wanted to add that little bit of extra. So that's it. 
I'm basically done. I'm just going to install the saddles and I'll be done. I searched and searched and didn't find any forward facing arrow, but I did kind of figure out that these brackets, if you look at it closely, just goes all the way down flat this way to where the saddle touches the bar. I don't think that's correct. This side is flat right here, and then there's a camber. So I'm thinking it should go on just like I have it because if you put it this way, it'll only go that way and then stops. It just goes to this point and stops, and the saddle still can pivot to fit the bottom of your kayak. So that's the way I have all four of them installed. And I'm going to wait till my partner gets here to help me fine tune the position. And once that's done, I'll never have to move them again. The plan is to position the trailer, lift the nose of the kayak up onto the saddles. The two outside saddles are locked in place. These saddles here are still adjustable in that I can still slide them along the bar. So let's see if I can get this thing up on here by myself. If I don't come back, you know something happened to me. Okay, the kayak is on the trailer. It would have definitely been easier if my wife had been here to help me. Loading an 88 pound kayak by yourself, even onto a trailer, was a little bit tough. I'm not sure the saddles are on correctly. In the instructions it says to load them on so that the directional arrows are facing forward. I looked and looked and didn't see them, so I'm gonna double check. But I think it's gonna work. So that's it, fellas. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to fine-tune the install of the saddles, make sure everything's correct, and shoot you another video after my test run. Appreciate your company. Bye.